current economy of agriculture has really not helped farmers, has, has really helped rural communities. It hasn't helped soil and water, so it can't possibly be a useful uh, direction. Mm -hmm. You know, it has resulted in what I call the cases and a bar. Corn and soybeans, uh, we've been told, is not a sustainable crop for Iowa. We have to be able to look at other things. We've incented farmers to overproduce since, you know, before World War II. And so we've kept food prices artificially low, and that's had consequences all over society. And one of those things is the environment and water quality. And until we stop doing that, I don't know. Are at that classic stage that's been talked about a long time. We'll see large agriculture probably continue to grow larger um, and, and specialize and we'll see big corn farms and soybean farms get bigger because they get very good at it, they become very competitive. At the same time we're seeing growth in the small farm. There's a segment of the farming population that can, will try to continue to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. The big row crop farmers will try to get bigger mm -hmm. and keep going that direction. And then there's another segment that either can't succeed doing that mm -hmm. or they want to get into agriculture or they have just different goals. Mm -hmm. And they're going to go the alternative route, which is all of the things that, you know, that I'm doing that you'll see at Francis Tickey's, different kinds of um, marketing systems, mm -hmm. reaching the consumer more directly. Mm -hmm. That's what I see happening. Okay. Kind of this divide. Sure. A continued divide probably because it already exists. When we see the increasing intensification of land use um, and larger holdings, it makes it, while well, there might be economics in its favor, maybe questionable. Um, it certainly provides challenge for ecological sustainability when you're talking about water quality or biodiversity. But I think that, is, as we all know, it's the incentives at the federal level that are really providing some of the, some of the, some of the disincentives to see that land, to, to see that vision come yeah. to fruition. So don't we have to change the game? We do at that point. In order to get this to happen on a bigger scale. Absolutely, we have to change that game at the federal level. Some say that we're going to have corn and soybeans forever, but you look at Iowa, 70, 50 to 70 years ago and there were hardly any soybeans grown here. And so I think there, there's an example that we can have a shift if there's some, some value to producers and value to society for those, those products. And maybe the products are a little bit uh, broader than just the, the grain that comes off there, but other types of products as well. There are going to be two trends that have been happening already that are going to continue simultaneously, kind of opposite trends. I think there'll be a divergence uh, continuing between large scale and small scale. Uh, global demand for commodity products, especially mainstream stuff like uh, corn, uh, used for all those things it's used for, uh, cotton, used for all the things it's used for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, sugarcane, is just going to continue to skyrocket. And so we're going to see a, a great... Look at the center of this emphasis on continued um, expansion and use of land for very, very intensive production. And I see that happening for the next 50 or 100 years. And as that happens, we will displace many of the traditional farmers. In the case of Iowa, where we have, for all practical purposes, 60,000 commercial farmers, 50,000 right now, we'll see that drop down to 10,000, and they will um, be uh, uh, very large. Simultaneously, I think we will see a food-based, local food-based agriculture blossom as well. In parallel, and it'll be interesting. And so, as a result, we will see an increasing number of small farms that are very successful, but they're designed to really target me as a human being and a consumer. What will the cropping practices look like in the future? Um, that's probably a challenge to state what that'll be. I think foreseeable future we'll probably have corn and soybeans, but you know, with some of the the interest in biomass production and, and maybe other types of grain crops, um, maybe we'll see a shift away from the monoculture of corn and soybeans. You know? My vision for for agriculture in Iowa is going okay, it's going to be with perennial um, agricultural crops that will produce either food or energy. And uh, by doing that, we're going to really reduce the amount of of energy it takes to produce those crops and the impact of tillage on, on the environment.
I hope we're heading towards more of a um, comprehensive, sustainable uh, agricultural system where we recycle nutrients to the soil locally uh, after processing locally and uh, basically make many, many products. Uh, it's, it's my hope that you can make a living on a smaller piece of ground. Um, we don't need bigger and bigger farms if we're making more profit per acre. I think, I, I mean, I think that we're always, that we need um, farmers of some size. I would like to see them going more and more in the direction of this true sustainability, mm -hmm. not just uh, using the word. Right. I really believe that the future of Iowa is very good for, for everyone. I, I believe that we're going to have population growth, and I believe population growth is going to be somewhat uh, stimulated by failures in other parts of the country. Uh, I believe that the future is um, uh, in the carbohydrate strategy and the bioeconomy of the future. I believe we're going to figure out ways in which we can create more value to the land than we ever did in the past. Uh, I believe that's going to take a, a dedicated effort on the, on the part of decision makers, uh, decision makers like this organization and other farm organizations and universities to get together. Food is an essential ingredient. As the world population grows, it seems to me like we're in a very, very good place, uh, whether it's in renewable energy from, uh, from uh, wind or from uh, the grain we grow or from the biomass that we raise. Uh, I believe that food will be a common denominator that brings value to the entire state of Iowa. Now, if we don't do things correctly, and if we don't have substantial change uh, from, from big policy decision makers like the Farm Bill, we'll see more entitlement, we'll see more loss of population, and we'll see loss of economy in a state that is prime for a bioeconomy. And so we need to be careful on how we approach and what we ask for. Uh, and what, if what we ask for is more corn and soybeans, uh, what we'll, we'll see is more population loss. And less economic value. So, so you can disagree if you want, but that's my opinion. Uh, the landscape of the of the future, I yeah. think, would be um, would be diverse. In those areas where we're seeing a lot of surface runoff, maybe we can strategically target perennial vegetation to slow that water. Um, in areas in Iowa where we see a lot of tile drainage and there's a lot of nitrate exported from that, can we um, intercept that tile drainage with nitrate removal wetlands that would clean up the water as well as provide some important habitat and other ecological functioning on the landscape. A friend of mine um, is, is, has been done, doing some work with the John Jeevans model of very intensive vegetable production. And he took Iowa's land, productive land, and he kind of did a little modeling on it. And he's, he said if you take the land and you assume half of it, you're going to set aside permanent into set aside. You're not going to use it. It's going to be permanently um, set aside. Then you take the other half of the land. And of that land, you only produce food on half of it every year, and the other half is in, is in uh, cover crop. Then you rotate it back and forth. So only a quarter of the land. He calculated that we, you, you could have uh, small uh, villages of 20, uh, it support 124 million people. <laughs> Just from, from that little bit of land use. And so we have tremendous capability to feed people. Um, and so in turn, tremendous ability to, to support little community, rural communities. So we've got to get rid of the subsidies for um, the, the, the worst crops. We, we subsidize the crops that are most erosive and most resource damaging.